Why did the last sighting of Nicola Bully change so dramatically between January the 27th and February the 3rd onwards? Initially, it was reported that the last person to see Nicola Bully was on the towpath between 9.15 and 9.20 a.m. Yet this changed from February the 3rd onwards to around 9.10 a.m. in the upper field location. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into some of the more peculiar aspects of this case and also take a look into the relationship of some of the individuals concerned with finding Nicola Bully's belongings. One thing I want to make clear before we jump into today's video is that I have gone back and taken a look at every single newspaper article, every single media source concerning this case to get a real feel of what took place during the earliest stages of this investigation. Firstly, we're going to take a look at the search for Nicola Bully, and then we're going to take a look into the last known sighting of this individual. Here we take a look at Miss Bully's movements on the day she disappeared. 8.26am, Miss Bully left her home with her two daughters aged 6 and 9. 8.40am, the mother of two dropped off her children at school and chatted to a few people in the school yard. 8.43am, Miss Bully walked along a path by the river wire. 8.47am, a dog walker, somebody who knows Miss Bully, saw her walking around the lower field with her dog. Their two dogs interacted briefly before the witness left the field via the river path. 8.53am, Miss Bully sent an email to her boss followed by a message to a friend six minutes later, making arrangements for a play date for her children. 9.01am, Miss Bully logged into a work conference call on Microsoft Teams. 9.10am, a witness, someone who knows Miss Bully, saw her on the upper field walking her dog Willow. The dog was not in its harness and off its lead. This is the last confirmed sighting of Miss Bully. Okay, so this timeline, I'm pretty sure most of you at home will be familiar with this particular timeline. 9.10am, the last sighting of Nicola Bully, 9.10am approximately on the upper field. This was where she was seen by a male dog walker walking a white fluffy dog. But surprisingly, this timeline has shifted dramatically. This timeline actually only came into place round about February the 2nd or February the 3rd. But from the day that Nicola Bully disappeared, January the 27th until February the 2nd, there is a completely different timeline, particularly concerning the last known sighting of Nicola Bully. So this is where the story starts to get a little bit peculiar, shall we say. And it's really important that you stick with this and you understand exactly what is stated here. So let's just go from the beginning. Nicola Bully went missing on January the 27th. From the very next day, it was widely reported that Nicola Bully was last seen on the towpath area between 9.15 and 9.20 a.m. Not the lower field, not the upper field, not the bench location, but on the footpath slash towpath between 9.15 and 9.20. Now, this wasn't just some random newspaper that was reporting this. This wasn't the Sun or the Daily Mail, although they did, they did cover this. This was actually reported by Lancashire Police on their own website and during a press appeal, which I'll play for you just in one moment. About 9.15 a.m. She was last seen walking her small brown dog on the towpath of the river wire. Uh, the dog was found about an hour later, as was her mobile phone. I've written down here some of the articles that I've come across which discuss Nicola Bully being seen between 9.15 and 9.20 on the towpath area. So we've got January the 28th, the day after she went missing. Lanx Live reported that she was seen on the footpath at 9.15am. Lancashire Post, she was seen on the footpath at 9.15am. January the 29th, Daily Mail reported that she was seen on the footpath at 9.15am. January the 30th, LBC, on a path 9.15am. Police Press Appeal last seen around 9.15 on the towpath walking her dog. Lanx Live again, on the towpath walking her dog around 9.15. January the 31st, Lancashire Police, footpath around 9.20am. The Mirror, footpath around 9.15am. February the 2nd, the Daily Mail again, 
seen on the towpath at 9.15am. So quite naturally, the most obvious question at this point in time is, who exactly is this eyewitness? Who is this individual who has come forward with the information? Now, if we take a look at the Mirror newspaper, they do give us a little bit more detail. It states the following here. The mortgage advisor was seen at about 9.20am on a footpath by the river wire in the village of St Michael's in Lancashire by a man walking his Labrador, it has been reported. The man's wife said she would regularly see Nicola as she and her husband would walk their dogs on the same stretch of river. So who is this individual with the Labrador? This isn't the 70-year-old man with the white fluffy dog who claims to have seen Nicola on the upper field. This is a completely different individual. A male individual walking a Labrador who claims to have seen Nicola Bully at around 9.20 on the towpath. Not the upper field, not the lower field and not by the bench. Who is this individual with the Labrador? What I do find quite intriguing about this newspaper article, however, is where it mentions the eyewitness's wife, the man's wife. I mean, what does the wife have to do with this situation? It immediately made me think of Ron the dog walker. Could it be Ron, who was the individual who saw Nicola Bully between 9.15 and 9.20 in the towpath locality? Is that a possibility? Now, many people will be aware that I myself have a Labrador called Harvey. And his dog, to me, doesn't look much like a Labrador at all. To me, it looks more like a Collie. But could it be a Labrador cross? From the back of this dog, to me, as I say, it appears to be a Collie. That's the appearance that I get when looking at Ron's dog. But the front does share some similarities from what I can see with a Labrador. And I wonder why this man's wife is even brought into the conversation here. There was one eyewitness who by all accounts saw Nicola Bully between 9.15 and 9.20, but that article mentions the man's wife. Is this Ron who saw Nicola Bully? Check out the following Sky News piece here. Come on through. Do come How through. are you? No, no, not at all. Good to see you. You're living it. Eh? <laughs> well, it has been like that. <laughs> so you, you actually, you saw the phone, is that right? Yeah. 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 You saw the phone that Friday morning? Yes. Yeah, and that was around, was it after half nine? I, I gave a full statement to the police yeah. with the exact time because, excuse me, because my wife's t telephone call had uh, a, 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 the time on it, so. Yeah. Yeah. But I've given a full statement to yeah. the police. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. it just on the bench, or? Pardon? Was it just on the bench? The phone? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 How's, how's the last three weeks been? Each day something new comes out, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. But, uh... And, and in, in, in terms of, you know, when you saw Phone, Lead and Willow, who you, you knew who Nicola was. No, I didn't. Oh, you, you knew the Willow, that was it, wasn't it? You knew, you I, knew, what the, I, I, you knew Willow. I knew I'd seen, I'd seen um, both, both, both the owners of Willow yeah. walking this dog in the past. But yeah. whilst I knew them by face, like I know your face, yeah. I didn't know the name. Yeah, yeah. But, but you, I remember you actually telling me when you saw the phone that the lead and Willow, you were like, OK, I'm going to keep an eye on it because something doesn't feel right. I, I, I thought somebody had gone to the toilet in the... Uh, uh, you know, that, that would have been... That was my, my first, uh, I got to about this red brick building here and I, uh, I thought, this, this is not right. Mm. And uh, but then there was a conversation, but my wife was trying to ring me, I was trying to ring her. Penny had rung my wife. Yeah. Um, to say that she'd, she'd fastened the dog up that was... that was. And Penny was the lady who actually spotted Willow That's initially right, yes. and saw the phone but didn't know what was going on with the That's phone. That's right, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and then after that, you know, what, what happened? Well, what the next it, it, that it was just a, a, a progression of, yeah. uh, of, of things happening, you know. We found out, because of the wallpaper on the phone, we found out who the couple were, then the school was contacted and Paul arrived. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, we'll, we'll let you carry on with your walk. I know you do this every morning. Yes. Nicola did this almost every morning as yeah, well. Probably, yeah, probably, yeah. Now, just going back to that newspaper article and looking at that phrase again there, how it's worded, the man's wife said she would regularly see Nicola as she and her husband would walk their dogs on the same stretch of river. So you've got an eyewitness who is a male walking a Labrador. You also have, his, also have his wife giving an opinion on what her husband saw. 
And then you have this individual by the name of Ron who appears on Sky News. It's his sister-in-law who finds the phone by all accounts, finds the harness, finds the dog, ties the dog up. And then he mentions something a little bit strange. He says in that particular interview, I got to the red brick building and thought something's not right here. But how did he get there exactly? Did he walk past the bench and then get to that area? Because the red brick building is further down the path. It's through the gate, it's past the bench, and it's by the side of the river. I'll show you a drone shot here of exactly where this red brick building is. So which direction was he coming from? Was he heading towards the bench? Or was he going past the bench? Did he see the items on the bench and walk up to the, the brick building and think to himself, hang on a minute, something's not right here? I mean, he's almost giving the impression that he found the items, but that's supposedly not correct. By all accounts, it's his sister-in-law Penny who finds the items. So this is a very, very strange situation. And even regarding the timeline, he doesn't want to be held to any kind of time here because this uh, interviewer says, oh, what was it, about 9.30 that you came across these items? Oh, you know, um, I gave a statement to the police. Because he knows that if he did see her between 9.15 and 9.20, then actually finding those items at 9.30, you know, he would have to say, oh, no, hang on a minute. Well, I did see her at 9.15 or 9.20. He doesn't want to put his name to that for some reason. Why is that? Is this the man who, with the Labrador? Is this him? Ron, is this the person who saw Nicola Bully between 9.15 and 9.20? And why has this timeline shifted? With putting speculation just to one side for the moment, one thing that we can be completely certain of is that this timeline regarding the last person who saw Nicola Bully shifts dramatically from January the 27th, the day of her disappearance, to February the 2nd. During that first seven day period, the official narrative, and it's important that I state that, the official narrative as put forward by Lancashire Police on their own website, as mentioned in their own press conferences and their press appeals to the public, Nicola Bully was last seen between 9.15 and 9.20 on the footpath slash towpath location. After February the 2nd, this completely changes. Her last known sighting is now at 9.10am approximately on the upper field. This was by a 70 year old male individual with a white fluffy dog, not a man walking his Labrador down on the towpath. Now this is where the story takes yet another bizarre turn. Does anyone remember the woman in the red jacket, the red coat? Red coat, white dog, dark hair, that lady. This lady goes by the name of Christine Bowman. She was sought early on in the investigation as a potential eyewitness. She spoke to police. She couldn't understand why the police wanted to speak to her. She said, I've already spoken to the police. I didn't see anything. And coincidentally, this took place on around February the 2nd or February the 3rd. The very next day, the timeline changes the last eyewitness account completely changes. It disappears. Seeing Nicola on the towpath between 9.15 and 9.20 is no longer of any relevance. Now, why is that? Let's take a look at a small paragraph from the mirror here. It states the following. A dog walker tracked down by police investigating the disappearance of Nicola Bully has told officers that she, quote, doesn't know anything. Mum of two, Nicola, 45, disappeared a week ago as she walked her dog Willow along the river wire in the town of St Michael's, Lancashire. So they did find this lady, Christine Bowman. She said she didn't know anything. She said, I've been to the police. I don't really know why they want to speak to me. I've already spoke to them the day that Nicola disappeared. And she claimed that she didn't see anything. Yet the very next day, the very next day, all of the complete official narrative changes. The timeline changes. The last sighting of Nicola on the towpath vanishes completely. And I wonder, is there some kind of connection here? Is there a connection between Christine Bowman and this man by the name of Ron? What sticks in my mind here and what makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable about all of this is the way in which Ron describes 
finding those items. It's almost as if he's recalling being the individual that came across them. You know, I got to the red brick building, I turned around and thought, hang on a minute, something not right here. I mean, the whole way that he describes what transpired on January the 27th, to me, just sounds a little bit strange. Combined with the fact that we're not just talking about Ron and a couple of random individuals, these were family members. This was Ron, his sister-in-law, and his wife. All three of them together discussing what they're going to do. We've got this phone, we've got the dog, we've got the harness, who should we call, what should we do? And then we have this individual, Christine Bowman, who then comes forward on February the 2nd or 3rd and says, no, I don't know anything about this, you've got me on CCTV, you've been searching for me for some time, and I don't know what's happened here, but I don't know anything about it. And then from that moment on, the towpath sighting vanishes. It goes completely away from the uh, police narrative, it goes away from the official narrative of this is where Nicola was last seen. It's completely scrapped, it vanishes from the public eye. It then all becomes about 9, 10am on the upper field. And then we believe that Nicola Bully's phone starts to make its way back to the bench area about 9.20. But for the first week of this investigation, you've been told that a man, not a woman, not Christine Bowman, but a man walking a Labrador saw Nicola Bully between 9.15 and 9.20. This has been, as I say, widely reported. So what happened? What took them away from this particular eyewitness account? And who actually gave it in the first place. Was it Ron? Did he come across these items? Did he pass Nicola as he was entering through the gate and saw these items? Is that a possibility? I've suggested in previous videos that if Nicola was leaving the area, if she was leaving the towpath and uh, headed back down towards Blackpool Lane, then that's the direction she would have travelled, back down the towpath towards Blackpool Lane and she would have followed the stream downstream ultimately to where her body was later discovered. So I can see it being a possibility that the phone was left on the bench at around 9.20 and then someone has passed her during that short time period on the towpath. That to me is feasible. But something's not adding up here for me. I don't have a good feeling about this, I have to be honest, there's something missing with all of this. Why does Christine Bowman coming forward change the timeline completely? Is there a connection between Christine Bowman and this man by the name of Ron? Certainly something worth looking into. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please do like the video down below and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I look forward to seeing you all again for the next one. Take care. Cheers.